All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about lines and planes in three-dimensional space. And so this is the second lesson in linear algebra. Okay, so I am assuming we have a pretty good familiarity with vectors and an idea of what I mean by space. But I will, oh, well, I've still got some stuff down there. I'm going to have to clear that out. I will draw you a picture of what I mean by space. All right, three-dimensional space, for the most part, we're going to draw it pretty much the same way every time. We're going to go over here, and we're going to start with the x, y plane. It's kind of like it always has been, except we're just going to like lay it down for a second. Um, uh, let that be x and y. And so we're kind of looking at it from above, kind of. And then we're going to bring in a z-axis, right? And so we're going to have three dimensions to work with. Okay. All right. R3 is the set of all possible vectors with three components. Okay. And so today our goal is to really, um, in this video I'm going to restrict it to lines and planes, not really that many of the examples. You know, how do we take, you know, these two points in space and connect them with a line? How do we do that? Versus how do we take three points in space, you know, like, uh, maybe I'll, like this, and write an equation for the plane that goes through them. Right, especially if I went like that. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. All right, so let's uh, scroll down and let's talk about a line. A line, right, in, uh, in geometry class, I told you you two points to find a line. But in algebra one, what you really wanted was you wanted a point and a slope, right? Uh, you wanted a point and a direction to head. And that was enough to uniquely define the line. Well, in space, you know, if we started with a point, P, and maybe I'll give it some coordinates, and we had a trajectory that we knew it was, like, moving towards, right? We call that maybe V. We're in space, so it's going to be a three-dimensional vector. Okay. If we wanted to consider the line of all possible points that are, you know, it's, it looks like a line uh, on that little line I drew, I wanted to, I don't know, maybe extend it out, you know, beyond what you can see, right? And I'm going to go down here and hopefully keep it straight enough to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah right down farther than you could see. Well, if you think about it, the points up here in this section of red, those are just points I'm going to access by starting with P and adding like a scaled up version of V. Okay? The points all along the blue arrow are points I could access by starting at P and adding like a fractional version of, of V. You know, maybe half of V to get halfway between the black point and the blue tip of the arrow. Right? Um, and now this bottom section of red, that's what we would get if we started at P and we added some kind of negative copy of V. Maybe, you know, where that arrow is pointing, maybe that's negative one and a half V off of P. Okay, so really the line, and oftentimes we'll write this, you know, with the script L or you could write it like you did in geometry class with the, the line above it. Really what this is is it's the set of all points that can be expressed as P plus some number times V. So, where T is a constant. Okay. But this is not, I mean, numbers it doesn't look like an equation for a line that we're familiar with. What this is really going to look like is, let's see, P is not Y not Z not plus some number times V, which is uh, V1, V2, V3. Okay. But I know how to multiply a number by a vector, scale up a vector by a constant. We're just going to distribute that constant to each of the components. Okay. And then, well, I know how to add two three-dimensional vectors together. We'll just add them component-wise, right? 
So let's just do that. Let's get rid of the plus. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean for that to go. I'm just leaving up. Oh, part of my X got left behind. That's too bad. Alright, so that's part of it. And plus, plus, plus. And so this is going to be kind of our general equation in this class for a line in space. L of T is it's going to be linear in T in all three components. That's going to be kind of the, uh, the hall here. And this is what I would call um, noise over there from a previous class. Uh, this is going to be uh, the parametric or vector equation for a line in space. Now you already have some experience with parametric equations from AP Calculus. Okay. Uh, in the spring, if you took the BC course, we did um, we did parametric equations. Uh, we stuck to two dimensions, but you know, as you'll see throughout this course, bumping it up to three dimensions would not be a big deal for a line. Okay, is you know L of T equals you know x naught plus v1 t, y naught plus v2 t, and z naught plus v3 t. Just really emphasize that. That's going to be our main way we're going to write a line in this course. There is symmetric equations. There is, I, I can't think of it, but considering where we're headed in this course, we're going to want to just uh, stick to the vector equation for lines. Easiest. All right, for example, here's two points. Write me an equation for the line that passes through. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of like give a sketch of the situation. Say, no loss of generality. This is P. That's Q. Right? Okay. This is two one zero going up to. We're not really. I wouldn't even say up. That kind of just editorializing. Um, just over to Q. Okay. So what is this vector here? This vector here is V equals. 2 to 5 is an increase of 3 in the x direction. 1 to 7 is an increase of 6 in the y direction. And 0 to negative 1 is a decrease of 1 in the z direction. Okay. So I've got my vector. I've got two points to choose from. Okay. Um, so, you know, a couple of different ways I could write my equation. Right? I could say, you know, L of t equals... 2, 1, 0, plus 3t, plus 6t, minus t, right? Or, and it's the same line, it's just going to take different, you know, it's going to trace it out uh, for different t values, right? If I started at 5, 7, negative 1. Okay, so I could say this is 5 plus 2t. No, 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 5 plus 3t. Okay, pardon me. I need to be looking at this point and these direction numbers, that trajectory. Okay. So 5 plus 3t, 7 plus 6t, and negative 1 minus t. Right? I was using square brackets. Earlier, so I that. Okay. that is right there. That's another version of the same line. Okay. Both of these are equally correct. Right, now let's talk about planes. And I'm breaking my rule. I usually like to stick to things I can hand draw for you. And I went and grabbed a uh, computer-generated parallelogram. But suppose this is a plane. Yeah, maybe we'll call it E or something. Uh, it's got some sort of like orientation, either with respect to your perspective or with respect to the you know x, y, z axes or whatever. Um, and you know a line in the plane you know, that we're very familiar with from our algebra classes, uh, it had a very you know particular way of measuring its trajectory. We had its slope. Right? It was very effective. But if you think about a plane, there isn't going to be a really a way we can talk about how it sits. We need more than one number or something. But if you think about it, for a given plane, there's only going to kind of be one kind of vector that could be orthogonal to all the points of the plane. And we're going to call that a normal vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw you a picture of a normal vector. Right? Something like that at the right angle. 
And if that's if it's right to the plane, then it's we can move it around. It would be right to any point on the plane, orthogonal to any point. So let me call this vector n, and I'm going to say that this is n1, n2, n3. Okay. Now, if you're watching this and you saw and you saw me do this in class, I kind of forgot to to go to this to this place. Uh, but this is, I'm going to show you why we would use the, um, where we get this equation for a plane from, okay? Plane E, maybe I'll actually write it like this. Plane E is equal to the set of all three-dimensional vectors. I will call X, Y, Z for now. And R3. For which that x vector, x, y, z, is orthogonal to n, right? It's the set of all of the vectors that are orthogonal to this n vector, right? So, it's the set of all vectors in R3 for which x, y, z is perpendicular or orthogonal, 1 and 2 and 3. Okay. And then it's, hold on just a second, I kind of lost myself. Uh, what did I want to say here? Okay, I know what it was. It was that this x, y, z, um, it, it's a vector that, you know, this point that n is coming out of, this is not necessarily the origin, you know, and maybe I'll call this point P. And that has coordinates like before, x0, y0, z0. So those vectors I drew in gray earlier are probably going to be more like, um, you know, if I had that. Um, this vector would be, whoops, uh, you know, whatever this point here, if that's x, y, z, right, it's the set of all points x, y, and z, where the vector coming from that all, all the way over to the gray point is a vector that's orthogonal to n. So I, was, I, I oversimplified it a little bit. So this is, you know, some x coordinate minus x0. This is some, well, I don't know what that was, uh, y minus y0, and then z minus z0, right? And so it's really, it's a set of all x, y, and z in R3 so that that gray thing is orthogonal to, uh-oh, lost one of my hands, that's a shame. Oh. Okay, so it's x minus x naught, y minus y naught, and z minus z naught is orthogonal. Okay, that means that their dot product is zero. So I can say n1 times x minus x0 plus n2 times y minus y0 plus n3 times z minus z0 is equal to zero because that's what it means to be orthogonal is that your dot product is zero. Okay, this here that I'm highlighting This is the point normal form of an equation for a plane. Okay, so the example I'm going to give you is kind of a classic. Here's three points. They're not collinear. Let's find a plane that goes through them. Now, for example, I'm going to give you three points. Let's find an equation for the plane that uh, runs through all three of them. Okay, they're not collinear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to get two vectors. You know, since I've got the origin as one of my points, I'm definitely going to be interested in, in using one of those, or using that one as like kind of my base of operations. Okay, and maybe I've got a vector u and I've got a vector w. Okay. 
in order to get the normal vector, I'm going to do u cross with w, right? Because there's kind of this implicit plane here, if you can see that. Um, and I could get a normal vector, right, by just kind of taking u crossed with w. Okay, so call that n. So n is going to equal u crossed with w. Okay. So that's going to be, and you know, what is u and w? u is equal to 1, 2, 3. And w is 0, negative 1, 0. Right? w is also known as ac, and u is ab. In case anybody wasn't sure where I was getting this from. Um, all right, so u crossed with w is going to be equal to something I can compute. u is 1, 2, 3, u is 0, negative 1, 0. Okay. All right, so it's going to be i times 0 minus negative 3 minus j times 0 minus 0 plus k times negative 1 minus 0. Okay, so it's 3, 0, negative 1. Okay, so n equals 3, 0, negative 1. Okay, also means that, oh, I've got three points to choose from. Uh, you know, you would probably want to choose the origin just to make it the easiest. That would be 3x minus z equals 0. But maybe I'll just choose a different one to make it more exciting. I'll use the 1, 2, 3. Um, so 3, I guess I'll say the equation of the plane, I'm going to write it in gray. Okay, so the... So what's the x coordinate of the normal vector 3? So it's 3 times x minus 1 plus 0 times y minus 2 minus 1 times z minus 3 equals 0. And that's how we write the equation for a plane given just three points. And so, yeah, I think that's going to be about all you need. Like, you know, the homework's going to go a little beyond what I've shown you, but I think that these are the main formulas and the facts that you need to know to, to attack these homeworks on, you know, lines and planes in three-dimensional space. All right, so good luck with those problems, and you'll let me know, of course, if you don't understand how to do them.